This just in. We've been right all along. Rainbow Dash is a weapon of mass destruction, and she has just performed a double sonic rain boom, long since banned by international treaties between Equestria and the Griffin Kingdoms. And for good reason, strange manifestations of physical changes have been going all over Equestria. I mean, look at me. I'm Joe Stevens, and this is the Equestria Inquirer. I'm feeling better. I'm the effects, <clears throat> the effects of the double rain boom are wearing off. Good evening, Ponyville. Our top story. Rumors are circulating that Rainbow Dash has successfully performed a double rain boom. This is, of course, a rumor, a nasty rumor that for once was not perpetuated by the Equestrian Inquirer. Sure, we tried to spread a rumor that Rainbow Dash has antlers. But that never really took off, and it's hard to mock some pony by calling them Rainbow Deer. This rumor of a double rainboom, however, began with a movie. It seems that a fictional movie was created to chronicle the lives of Rainbow Dash and Twilight Sparkle. The movie, entitled Double Rainboom, premiered recently and has had no lack of controversy. It portrays Rainbow Dash as a diabolical instrument of widespread destruction, and Twilight as a mad scientist that, in combination, destroy all of Ponyville and sever the boundaries between dimensions. Wait. That's, uh... That's actually a plot to an old Equestrian Inquirer. Um, the movie is about Rainbow Dash meeting other fictional characters, including Plank. Shut up, Plank. Uh, Double Rain Boom is about Rainbow Dash realizing her abilities are a danger to those around her and only through responsible use of her power can sh peace be... That's an old plot of an EQI episode too! Okay, so pretend this is not the plot to an episode of EQI and is actually its own thing, alright? Okay, moving on. The movie started out innocent enough. Its director, Flamingo Rich Productions, which traditionally sells gold-dipped flamingos and other ostentatious ornamentations for your flamingo, worked over a year on production. Twilight Sparkle was an obvious choice for a movie, being a princess and holding immense power. And Rainbow Dash has already been indicted on international war crimes, so the combination is perfect for cinema. The movie's controversy comes from two sources. Rainbow Dash, Twilight Sparkle, and a third choice, A Burning Duck. Twilight says the film portrayed her as an incapable and odd, and none of her actions made any sense. Rainbow Dash complained, <clears throat> I have fast pacing in real life! The pacing was really slow! Why was the pacing so slow in the movie? I'm a fast-paced pony! The Burning Duck complained because the script relied on deus ex machinas and had no real compelling story to tell, and that he was on fire. But this was not the only movie to premiere last weekend. While Double Rain Boom had a lot of publicity, another movie about Equestria's past actually beat it in box office sales. Snowdrop, an historical account of early winter, is widely regarded by critics. However, the creators of this movie are now being sued for a wave of manly tears that have drowned several ponies. On a happy note, equestrian reserves of liquid pride have never been higher. Is the double rain boom a myth or a reality? No pony knows. Rumors of its existence have circulated since the premiere of the movie of said name. Rainbow Dash denies its existence, as does Princess Twilight Sparkle. However, as a precaution, Rainbow Dash has been forced to watch the movie Snowdrop. She has since stopped wanting to destroy the world. And in an effort to keep her in a state of docility, the actress who played Snowdrop has been assigned to study under Rainbow Dash's wing. Thanks for taking one for the team, Scootaloo. I'm sure you understand. In other news, Scootaloo has begun construction of what she calls a double Scootaboom. Don't worry, she doesn't finish it. Pinkie Pie comes out of nowhere and saves the day, because that's a great ending. Hello, viewers! Lord of all evil, him here. 
Aren't you tired of those other diners making you pay full price for flapjacks? Not to mention there's never anything to keep the little ones occupied now, is there? Wouldn't it be peachy if someone solved that for you? Well, someone did! Come on down to the Auto Time Diner, where meals are half price. All you have to do is make your daughter solve my riddles. They have 15 seconds! Doesn't that sound like fun? That's the Auto Time Diner, now with one convenient location. But it looks like I can't tell you where it is because it's one of the riddles. Okay. My cooking is hella good! <laughs>of the movie Double Rainbow, ponies have been searching for answers to several dangerous questions. Is Twilight Sparkle a mad scientist? Is Rainbow Dash really that unstable? Why is that burning dock still on fire? Can't some pony help him? Here to answer at least one of these questions is Tech Rat with this week's Mares in a Minute. Good evening. I'm Tech Rat. And welcome to At The Movies with Tech Rat. Double Rainboom, the newest film to hit Equestria, is supposed to be a rollicking adventure filled with laughs and thrills. I wouldn't know. I haven't seen it. The film is so popular that getting a ticket is extremely difficult. It also doesn't help when you have been banned from every theater in Equestria due to an unfortunate incident involving butterscotch frosting and a beaver. Stupid beaver snitching on me. But anyway, as luck would have it, Faco Studios came to my rescue with a direct-to-DVD release called Bubble Rainstorm, the story of Bowie Raindash. Thank goodness for studios that make cheap knockoffs of blockbuster films, for without them, we would never get to experience what it's like to watch the newest movies if they were written and directed by morons. Bubble Rainstorm opens in Horsey Town, where in the attic of the local thrift shop, Dusk Twinkle is baking a special cake that has been infused with radiation. While distracted with her baking, Bowie Raindash, a winged kleptomaniac donkey, flies in, swipes the bowl of leftover batter, and licks it clean. She suddenly gains the power to make objects appear with a mere thought, and after filling Dusk's attic with waffle irons, old socks, and clones of Christopher Walken, finds her power spiraling out of control, causing the creation of the bubble rainstorm of the film's title. Horsey Town is plunged into chaos as the giant bubbles falling from the sky start consuming the town's ponies one by one, leaving them to float away as they scream in terror. Bowie Raindash, ashamed of her actions, jumps into a mysterious portal that appears for some reason and finds herself in Baby Fight Land, where children battle grisly monsters for sport. This is where the film starts to go south, as Bowie Raindash all but disappears from the storyline, and the focus instead turns to three toddlers with superpowers called the Super Stuff Squirts. For the next ten minutes, we're treated to a montage of unparalleled violence and gore, as the film suddenly seems to forget it's a PG movie for kids, and dives straight into hard R territory. Blood and viscera fly liberally as the toddlers rip countless trolls and goblins in half for no apparent reason. Eventually, after numerous beheadings and eviscerations, we return to Bowie Raindash, who is saved from Baby Fight Land by Blinky Guy, Bowie's creepy friend with an odd facial tick. The film ends on an unsatisfying note, with Bowie Raindash learning pretty much nothing from her experience. The implications of child gladiatorial combat are never explored, and the countless ponies that floated away to their doom in the merciless bubble prisons are never mentioned again, seemingly left to either slowly suffocate or explode when they reach the edge of space. But perhaps it doesn't matter, as a twist at the very end reveals the entire film to be the fever dream of a brain-damaged monkey. You know, films are magical. They can be a portal to an amazing world of fantasy, action, and romance. They can whisk you away on an exhilarating roller coaster ride of excitement and adventure. They can also crush your dreams, break your spirit, and make you wish for death while you weep openly into your oversized popcorn, as was the case with Bubble Rainstorm. However, the film does get kudos for including Christopher Walken in a rare equestrian role. Join me next time when I review the other substandard copy of a current blockbuster, Snot Drip, which I guess is about a filly with a head cold. Until then, the balcony is closed.
Thank you, TechRot. Movies in Equestria have a long and storied tradition. From the heartfelt movies about sheds and base cannons, to what can only be described as the epic movies we have come to know and love. Some ponies may not like these movies, however. Cranky Doodle Donkey, for instance, loves movies about ponies, but his cousin Cranky Douchey Donkey does not. He's always got to be a sad sack about everything. Someone who loves movies, though, is LTT Moose with this week's Horseshoes and Hand Grenades. Thanks, Joe. The movie industry in Equestria is booming. Rain booming. Double rain booming. It's made stars out of no ponies, but it's nice to see that everyone's remained modest and humble. Right? All right, people, what you got for me? Thanks to the success of Double Rain Boom, Bon Bon seems to have let it go to her head. She was seen demanding preferential treatment at the cake shop. If I said I want extra frosting, you gonna give me extra frosting. Cause don't you know who I am? I'm Bon Bon. It, it, sweetie drops. It, it, gingerbread. I just star Double Rain Boom! I made that movie, okay? And I'm not just a regular, I'm the greatest actor! I'm so great! Cause I do voices too, you know? I just, like, voice is the thief that breaks into the basement of your imagination! I'll steal your Christmas tree with my voice cause I'm bad bad! Dudes, do they know who she is? She's like, kind of important or something. I think she had cutie mark replacement surgery. Wait, wait, that's a that's a thing? That's a thing that is real? That no, they need yeah, to do it's now? called no, it's called cutie talks. You wait, you get the soup, you wait till it goes bad, and you inject it Isn't, in your butt. I thought that was the disease that gave you like cutie marks all over your body. No, it's, the thing there. it's like the um the cutie toxalism whatever. <laughs> the soup. Did you say you toxalism? It, it makes your cutie mark more youthful and rejuvenated. That sounds more like it should kill you, you know. No. I mean it really, is, is a wrinkly cutie mark that, no, that much of a no, concern about the, the What's What's a cutie mark? They make it from the botcha toxins and they blend it up. I mean, whatever. I don't know. But, but uh, you they put your soup it. in a blender? Is that how you like you, you blend soup? I thought but, soup was soup because it's already been blended. But do you think that, like, the calories would count? That's what I'm concerned about. Well, you're injecting it into your butt. You're bypassing your stomach, or, like, most of your stomachs. I think horses have, like, nine stomachs, don't they? Do they? I'm pretty sure it's nine I'm or twelve. I'm not a veterinarian. I don't know. Yeah, neither do I. It's not really much of my concern. But Dude, carbs bypass it. Wait. <laughs> what, what were we talking about? Celestia's butt. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. It always is. <laughs> Dude, her butt's gonna get so big with all those carbs. I know, oh, it's gonna poor be, yeah, thing. yeah, it's gonna go from a, from a sun to I a mean, supernova. does it even look better? <laughs> what does her thing look like now? Well, it's a sun. I heard they can't move them anymore after they do the cutie talks. After the, really, it's a safe, so like, it's gonna be eternal sun, is, eternal like sunshine? Like this, but oh. on your butt. Eternal like, sunshine like, of the buttless mind. Or anything else. The story of Snowdrop has turned actress Shirley Trample into a media darling. And there's nothing performers like more than having a single role define their career. Dudes, you know how Shirley Trample has been trying to break out from her role as Snowdrop? Mm -hmm. We've got her coming out of some auditions for some very provocative off-Broadway plays. Uh, here's one for War Horse. Another for, uh, the opalescence monologues. Then lastly, one for hominids. Oh my god, I yeah. think I'm gonna get naked in that one. Alright, uh, you guys are gonna have to help me out here because is she like an actual Philly actress? Uh, because I've seen her like smoking, uh, drinking... No. You know, I don't think she's from Philly, dude. No, you know Gary Colehorse? Oh, yeah. From oh, different oh, oh. Yeah, so no, yeah. she has his disease where, right. you know, she looks like a Philly, but she's like 40. Oh, okay. So or maybe she's from older. Philly. That's, I, I mean, that's unfortunate that she has a disease, but I mean, eternal youth, right? I mean, that's that's pretty good. She, Gary Colehorse will live forever. I'm pretty sure that's how He's it works. He's a security guard. Ooh, well, I mean. Dudes. Dudes. If she never ages. How will she know when her birthday is? It's 
Still, though, I'm glad that she's, you know, uh, an adult. I mean, I thought she was an orphan for the longest time. I thought her no. parents, like, abandoned no, her. No, I think that she was has just... parents. That's good. She's, though. like, 40. Yeah, she's, so she, her parents are probably dead then. No, yeah. I mean, that might be worse. But probably naturally, I don't know. So that, that's good, yeah. They I don't know. Were the, the Snowdrop murders ever, ever solved? I don't know. Maybe they got hit by lightning. Although, if I could be a kid again, that would be awesome. I would totally take that opportunity, yeah. No. Like, do Power no. Rangers and no. kickboxing. No, being a kid yeah. sucks. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. can't drive. Well, maybe Nobody for you. takes you seriously. And you're subjected to these condescending kid shows that assume you're an idiot just because well, you're a little kid. Well, well now, now, I'm sure there are some very nice programs out there for children no, that treat them like No, it's all toy-driven like swills. Okay, yeah. okay, I'm supposed to like Princess Glitterbutt I, because no, I'm okay, in the yeah, target really demographic. But I don't have no, to take no, this look, paternalistic look, 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 garbage. This is gender bias, age bias, I hate the system, I will destroy the system! I'm a brony. Thank you, LTT Moose. Did you cry when you watched Snowdrop? I know Plank did. He's such a sap. Ha ha ha! Wait. What's that noise? Is that Rainbow Dash trying to do a double rainbow again? She's flying into the air! She's coming down! Quick! Mason Alcat, help us before Rainbow Dash does a double rainbow again! I don't want to have contrived dialogue and bad pacing! Here's Mason Alcat with this week's Chopping at the Bit. <laughs> Sap, right? <laughs> I see it knocks him out every time. <laughs> See, the pause is where the joke is. By by extending a pause when there should be more action, it it, it illustrates the joke and, and allows the the audience time to to uh, to appreciate it. <laughs> Sap, <laughs> pausing because the joke was important enough, so so we had to keep focusing on it and, and until stuff. That's funny. That's comedy. Why are you still watching me? Pinky, remind me never again to make a deal with Rainbow Dash. She said she'd watch Snowdrop with me if I let her try her new move on me. The Rainbow Shave. I got the last laugh anyway. She'll be crying for weeks after watching that movie. Thanks, Joe. Snowdrop has got to be one of the most tear-jerking movies in Equestria today. The only question we have here at EQI is just how historically accurate is it? We were hoping to get an interview with Princess Luna, but when we came to the palace to ask for one, we were turned away. Apparently, from what the guard tells us, Princess Luna was having an uncontrollable laughing fit after viewing the movie, and quoted as saying, If only they really knew. This led us to believe that there is more to the store than the movie has told us. That's why I'm here with Fancy Pants with the Equestria Historical Society. Greetings, Fancy Pants. It is a pleasure to meet you. Why, the pleasure is all mine. I have a question for you. Why is it that a movie that has so many of us crying has the Princess of the Night laughing to the point of tears? That is a very excellent question. And I have a very excellent answer. Back in those days, Princess Luna and Snowdrop were two of the biggest show omegas that Equestria had ever seen. Really? How so? Did you know that the two of them almost brought about the pony apocalypse? Go on. Well, from our historical records and Princess Luna's personal journal, we discovered that the two of them were responsible for causing an unscheduled lunar eclipse, which caused widespread panic across Equestria. If that wasn't enough, they also caused a snowfall that was red as blood, as well as locust and frog-shaped snowflakes. This went on for years until Princess Celestia decreed that enough was enough. Why did she do something sooner about this? Partly because she thought it was funny to watch the populace overreact, and partly because they were her ideas in the first place. Sadly, with Princess Celestia, that doesn't surprise me any. Well, now that we have the whole story, not really. We have even more information concerning some of the stallions they were dating, as well as some of their other exploits. Wow, look at the time. Uh, well, Fancy Pants, we'll have to continue this some other time. Not the problem. Back to you, Joe. 
Oh no, she's done it again! Look at me, Blank! I guess you're right, it is a pretty good look on me, isn't it? Like the ball? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm Joe Stevens, and this has been the Equestrian Inquirer. Good night, and good luck. Stay brody, my friends. Pinky, are you sure this is safe? Sure, Mason. I do this all the time. It's perfectly okay, safe. Okay, I trust you. I think. I'm a brony. I've been going all over Equestria. I mean, look at me. I'm Joe Stevens, and this is the Equestrian Inquirer. Feeling better, huh? The effects, <clears throat> the effects of the double rainboom are wearing off. Good evening, Pony Bill. Our top story: Rumors are circulating that Rainbow Dash has successfully performed a double rainboom. This is, of course, a rumor, a nasty rumor that for once was not perpetuated by the Equestrian Inquirer. Sure, we tried to spread a rumor that Rainbow Dash has antlers. But that never really took off, and it's hard to mock some pony by calling them Rainbow Deer. This rumor of a double rainboom, however, began with a movie. It seems that a fictional movie was created to chronicle the lives of Rainbow Dash and Twilight Sparkle. The movie, entitled Double Rainboom, premiered recently and has had no lack of controversy. It portrays Rainbow Dash as a diabolical instrument of widespread destruction, and Twilight as a mad scientist that, in combination, destroy all of Ponyville and sever the boundaries between dimensions. Oh. This just in. We've been right all along. Rainbow Dash is a weapon of mass destruction, and she has just performed a double sonic rainboom long since banned by international treaties between Equestria and the Griffin Kingdoms. And for good reason, strange manifestations of physical changes